Hi, I'm Corey Knockgrinder, CISSP and Director of Security Strategy for WatchGuard, and you're watching this week's WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest security stories every week. Let's jump right in for the week starting February 6th. So this was a very busy week for security stories with many, many stories about big breaches and patch software and so on. So let's just jump in with the, one of the first big anonymous breaches for this week. Early in the week, we learned that Anonymous was actually able to intercept a telephone conference between the FBI and the Scotland Yard. Uh, as it turns out, uh, Anonymous first figured out how to actually intercept an email between these two organizations. And like many teleconference calls, they have email systems that send information about how to join the call and what passcode to use. Once Anonymous intercepted this email, they were able to then join that conference call and listen in. And this was a pretty sensitive call where the FBI and the Scotland Yard shared information about how they were tracking various Anonymous or more specifically LOL sec members and how their prosecution was going. So it shows how easy it is for bad guys like hacktivist group like Anonymous to intercept emails. The moral of this story is we really should leverage email encryption much more often than we do. Emails sent in the clear text across the internet very, very often. I mean, most of email is in clear text. Uh, we have solutions, old solutions like PGP, which can help you encrypt email, but they're very, very difficult for some, some users to use. I recommend if you're interested in email encryption looking at our XCS product line that has a very easy to use web-based email encryption where we handle all the complex PKI and certificate handling for you and you just have to worry about logging in and receiving encrypted email. Anonymous didn't stop this week at intercepting FBI calls, but we also learned that they were able to breach the email server used by Syria's president, uh, Bashir al-Assad. Once they breached the server, they were able to steal a bunch of emails, which they then disclosed publicly, and they also learned the Syrian president's password, which was 12345. And of course, this is a very horrible common password that many people use. And the tip to you is you should definitely follow strong password practices. Practices. A lot of the, the most common breaches are simply uh, due to sim people using silly, silly passwords. I have many posts on the WatchGuard security talking about the best password security practices, so definitely check them out and follow them. Another story this week is Symantec's PC Anywhere source code was finally publicly released. Uh, a group called uh, LOD, uh, the Lords of the Dahamaraja, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Anyways, LOD is an Indian-based hacking group loosely affiliated with Anonymous. And if you followed our weekly posts a few weeks back, uh, Semantic had warned that PC Anywhere, it was dangerous to use that product because some attackers had that code and may be exploiting vulnerabilities they have found due to having the source code. Well, this week we found out that LOD, this hacking group, had been extorting Symantec via email for the past few weeks, basically asking for $50,000 if, if Symantec didn't want them to release their source code. Now, LOD says that this whole extortion racket was just a joke. Uh, they were doing it to try to make Symantec look foolish. Meanwhile, Symantec, who seemed to be responding to these extortion emails, they said they weren't serious about paying LOD any money. They were just acting, uh, actually working in cooper cooperation with a U.S. Uh, law enforcement agency to try to investigate this particular breach. In any case, early this week, that whole extortion attempt did not work, so LOD did post post Semantics PC Anywhere source code, and they put it on BitTorrent for anyone to download. So if you do use PC Anywhere, though uh, Semantic does say the latest revision should be safe and is not the same code that's posted, I would be very, very suspicious of my PC Anywhere software, and perhaps I would use my firewall policies to prevent uh, most users from accessing PC Anywhere and only allow it from particular users. 
Unfortunately, this week's breaches do not end there. There's a, si a final breach where a group calling themselves Swag Security actually breached a company based in China called Foxconn. And this is a very uh, big company that's well known in the US media right now since they're responsible for making many of Apple's products like iPhones and iPads. And they also work with many, many other vendors like Microsoft to create products. And recently there's been a lot of news that they have bad working conditions there. Well anyways, this week SwagSec informed the world that they had breached Foxconn and they'd stole a ton of data including the usernames and passwords of many, many, many Foxconn employees. And they were able to even gain enough access that uh, some of Foxconn's partners like Dell and Microsoft and Apple of course, they had enough access to use passwords and actually uh, uh, make orders to these particular partners. So what's scary about this release is besides the breach itself, Swag Security is, is another group that's similar to one called LulSec that showed up in 2011. And in their release of this information, they also claimed, uh, well, not only are they actually attacking Foxconn because they think it's sad that the workers have bad conditions there, but they're doing it just for fun. They think these kind of big breaches against big business are just funny. So you can expect groups like these to continue to, to launch these big breaches just, just for fun. So let's end with a few stories about upcoming or recently released software updates. There's two of note this week. Uh, first of all, Chrome actually released another update. I believe they call it Update 17. It fixes a bunch more security vulnerabilities, and it also adds some new security features as well. So if you're a Google Chrome user, go get that. Also, Microsoft released their advanced notification uh, for their patch day for February. Uh, their patches won't come out till next Tuesday, but they have said they're going to release nine different bulletins, and these bulletins will fix uh, vulnerabilities in Microsoft Windows, Internet Explorer, Office, and some of their development frameworks like .NET and, and, and uh, Silverlight. So if you're a Microsoft user, you should start preparing for Patch Tuesday and be sure to go and download, test, and, and, and deploy all those patches as soon as you can next Tuesday. So that's it for this week's Security Week in Review. And as usual, I'll post links to all these stories in our WatchGuard Security Center post. If you'd like more regular stories, I recommend you follow me on Twitter at SecAdept or continue to follow our WatchGuard Security Center blog where we'll post more regular stories. So thanks for watching and at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.